To use a slotted quilling tool, we simply slide the paper into the slot. And you see this tail right here? I tend not to like that hanging over the edge of my tool. So I'll tend to bring that right to the edge of my tool. And then I start to turn my tool. Now you can turn your tool handle either to the right or to the left, whatever way your hand feels comfortable. And then with this fingertip here on the edge of my coil right at the top and my thumb, I'm just keeping my coil in place. And that's just to keep these edges nice and tight and even. So if it comes unaligned like it was like right here when it was unaligned, I use this finger and just kind of push those coils up, uh, up against this finger here and just keep them nice and even. Now the tension I'm using with my thumb against here, I'm not pressing against these coils super tight. It's actually just kind of enough to keep these coils together. They're not um, overly tight in tension. It's kind of hard to imagine what, what you're talking about as a beginner, but you'll get the sense of it once you do it a couple times. So, and everyone's tension is completely different. If you're a crocheter, the way that you pull on your yarn is different from every crocheter. And so it's kind of like a practice thing that your fingers get to know. So this coil is now finished coiling on my tool. My edges are lined up and I'm going to use this finger to push the coil off. I never want to use this hand and pull the coil off. If you pull it off, you risk creating a tornado and it's going to make gluing to your final surface a lot harder. So I've got my coil here and do you see if, if there's any uneven edges here, I just tend to take a second to compress them with my fingers just to make sure that they're nice and straight and even. And then in this case, I want to put it on my work surface and let it go and see the coil that it makes. And then now one thing to note that using a slotted tool like this, it will create a crimp in the middle of your innermost ring right there. So let's say that you like using the slotted quilling tool, but you don't like that innermost crimp. You can get away with that telltale sign by using your needle tool to simply put it in there and just give it a little twirl back and forth and smoothen that innermost coil out. And then it's not so noticeable. Now I'm going to show you how to use a needle quilling tool. And this is not your typical quilling tool. It's actually called a Kemper lace tool and it's typically used for clay. I'll leave a link in the description below this video, but you don't have to buy this specific one to achieve great results. I simply had this in my craft room, picked it up one day and started using it for quilling. There's nothing special about it, but I do like the feel of a wood handle in my hands and I'm just used to this tool now. So I'm sure whatever you decide to use is fine too. Now, whenever I start a quilling strip, I tend to just gently soften the strip. I don't know why, my fingers just like the way the feel of the paper feels after I've softened a strip gently like this. And you don't have to do this, I just tend to like to do it that way. Now, with the slotted tool, we were turning the handle. In this case, with a needle tool, we are not turning the handle, okay? We're going to be turning the paper and I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to put the paper against the finger. And what I tend to do is just press it against the fleshy part of my finger. And then I rub with my thumb to gather the paper around the tool. And when I got to the knuckle around here, I just, with this finger, I'm pressing against it to make sure it doesn't unravel, bring it back to the tip of my finger and continue on. Now, the edges of the paper strip might get a little unruly and uneven. That's okay. I'll just bring it back and just try to, you know, keep it even as much as possible. Now, the friction that I use to get that coil started, it's kind of like the friction that you feel when you get glue on your fingers and you want to rub it off. And when I was teaching my nephews how to do this, I love to give the example of rubbing snot off their fingers. So if you're teaching kids, I guarantee you're going to get a laugh out of them. 
Now, as you turn your coil, you can see how these edges are a little bit out of alignment. That's okay. I'm just going to push the coil off and compress that with my fingers and just give it a second. And that's going to make it a lot more even. Okay, so let's compare these two coils. Now, this is obviously the slotted tool because it's got a crimp in the innermost ring, and this is the one with the needle tool. I would say, generally speaking, the needle tool, when I make it, it tends to be a tighter coil. Now, some of you might be saying, I've tried and tried to use the needle tool, but the paper won't wrap around the needle. And I'll tell you a little story. Years ago, I was approached by someone who tried to master this needle tool and she just couldn't do it. She started telling me all the ways she tried and I just interrupted her by suggesting that she lick her finger. And she looked at me like I was nuts. I told her, just try it. She finally did and the look on her face was incredibly rewarding to me. It was like watching the sun rise for the first time. She was so happy to finally achieve it. So why did something as simple as licking your finger work? Moisture is going to increase the friction. And if you don't want to, you know, use your saliva, then just moisten a sponge or a towel and dab your finger against it at first. You don't need very much, but your fingers or like if, if your fingers are dry, the, the room is dry, your, your summer is hot, your fingers might be dry, it's going to make wrapping this around the needle tool a lot harder. So I just, you know, after she licked her finger and it was a little bit moist, it just gave that little bit of extra friction that she needed. So I'll try to give you a, a, a slower version. So this thumb is rubbing the paper and you see how it just gathers like that? So I'm just trying to get that friction feeling, okay? To make it gather. So let me know how it goes for you. I want to hear what your experiences are, okay? Now, I don't want to confuse you, but what if you tried the needle tool and your hands didn't like it, but your eyes want a smaller inner circle for your coils? Then I have another suggestion, and that is a fine slotted tool made in Japan. And of course, I'll leave a link in the description below. So what's cool about this tool is that there's a knob here that is freewheeling and it rests against your palm as you're turning. So it's kind of nice that there's no friction against your hand as you turn this tool. And here it is. Here's the fine slotted quilling tool. You can see how much smaller that innermost coil is. And I'll show you a comparison between the two so you can see the difference. And we're only talking about the innermost coil here, but you can see it's, it's quite a bit smaller. So now you've seen me show how to use both of these tools. And if you're trying to decide which one to get and you want my suggestion, I would actually have to say both. Why? Because I actually like to make fringed flowers. This is an example of a fringed flower that I custom cut with my digital cutter. I I'll leave a link to my Etsy shop where you can buy this custom made flower. You can also watch another video of mine where I show you how to make your own simple fringed flower. And a fringed flower basically is just, you know, like this is a regular quilling strip and what I've done is just added a little bit of fringe to make a petaled flower. You can use a needle tool, but I much prefer a slotted quilling tool when I'm making fringed flowers. Let me just show you for some of you who may not have seen a fringed flower. So you can see how the petals are being shaped in here like this around the base. And again, you know, you can watch a more detailed video about that in the link below after you glue that closed. You can just basically open up your fringed flower this way. And you can change up the color on the inside. I just use some markers to change up the color in here, but you can, you know, have some simple ones like this. I hope my tutorial was helpful in helping you figure out which kind of tool to use. And if so, it would be great if you leave me a comment below or give me a thumbs up and the like button. 
Thanks and see you next time.